Hi everyone and welcome to another part in our quest system series in UE4. So far in this series we've set everything up to have our character run around and pick up quests from NPCs and store these in a quest log ready for the player to click on and make active in our objective UI. Now we're going to begin a series of videos to help us complete these objectives. Start off today with a uh, basic setup for all of them and then uh, also covering how to do a location based objective and how to check those off. So let's begin. So for our, the way it works is we're going to use event dispatches for our quests and as soon as an item is done or completed that would be relevant to a, a, a quest we will call out for the quest to see if it is a, an objective of that quest. So I'm going to go on to my quest parent over here so my quest parent where all quests derive from i'm going to create a event dispatcher down at the bottom here and the event dispatcher is going to be a location reached and this event dispatcher we're going to bind towards a different function so the function we're going to create in here will be the one that checks off whether or not the correct objective was being met so in the functions i'm going to click on the plus function and I'm going to call this one check location objective. And that's going to simply run through all the objectives that they are uh, belong to this quest and see if it is matching the location that's being pinged back from the event dispatcher. But more on this in a moment. Let's go back to our event dispatcher. So on the event graph, um, we need to bind the location reached event dispatch to this function. So I'm going to go begin play. And so at the begin play, it's going to break the binding. So drag your location uh, reach event dispatcher out and click bind. And here we go. So the event that's going to go into here, uh, typically you, you could pass into a, uh, a custom event like so, but we want it to go to a function instead. So here, we're going to drag off and go create event. When you've done that, you should see a select function box appear. If you don't, click compile and you should start seeing it appear. From here, I can click on now and choose my check location objective. So that function is now bound to this event dispatcher. So when another thing inside this world calls this event, it's going to trigger this function. Click compile and let's just go into a check location objective and for now, I'm just going to do a print string, just to demonstrate that this works. So what this is for the location reached, we will carry on and do the rest of these later, where we do uh, target killed or item picked up and item interacted with, uh, all four of the different types of objectives. And they will be bound at the start of the game. But anyway, that will do. Let's close this quest. So the way we record a location, it'd be through an actor, a special location marker actor. So I'm going to go and add new, blueprint class, and choose actor. And this guy is going to be called a location marker. I open this up, and in here we're going to give it a couple of variables, or one variable. And that variable name is going to be location name. And it's going to be a type of a text. And then I'm going to add a single component to this, and this can be a sphere collision. Okay. So when this sphere collision is collided with by the player, we want it to call out that event dispatcher. So to do that, we're going to go into the event graph here, and get rid of these ones. I'm going to click on the sphere component, right click here, and go begin overlap, and choose the add on component begin overlap. So this will trigger as soon as the sphere is collided with by the player or by anything. To check that it's actually the player, we're going to use the other actor here, which is what is colliding with it, and cast that to the third person character in this case, but basically the actor that is your character actor for the player. As the third person character here, um, we now got access to the quest log, as well as we have proven that this is actually the player that's walked into this sphere uh, collision. So, what I'm going to do is, as a third person character come off of here, I'm going to get the quest log of the player. And what I want to do is 
you've got two choices. You can make it so it only checks the objective of the active quest or all of the quests. In this case, I'm going to do all of the quests. But if you want to do active quests, it's as just the same as what we're doing here, but instead you won't do a for each loop. So I'm going to get quests array here. If you're doing active quest, it's just get active quest. And then I'm doing the for each loop because this is a, a, an array, basically a list. And this for each loop will go through the list for each one here and uh, do whatever we put in the loop body. If you're doing active quest only, you don't need to do this. You can just carry on as is with this bit. So with the array element, we can drag out of here and we can call location reached. Now location reached, I want this actually to spit out this uh, location name we did over here. So the location name of this location is passed through to this event. So to do that, I need to go back to where this is located, which is on the quest. Click on your location reached event dispatcher and on the right hand side you'll see inputs. I'm going to click on the new and the input here will be location name. And well, not, not, not location name, so I'm not going to do name, sorry, my bad. Instead of location name, we just need location itself uh, because we want that to be a location actor. Sorry, my bad. My... Location uh, marker. There you go. And click compile. Going to get error because the function here doesn't have an input for it. So go new input, and this is going to be location reached. Location reached, and click compile. So that will clear that error. So this event will now be called by location uh, location reached event dispatcher, which is being called over here by this here. And you can see the input here for the location. It's now appeared, and this can be simply a reference to itself. So choose self from the list, click compile, and that's it. So this is how we do the event dispatch calling. We get access to the quests. For each one, we call the location reach. So every single quest in my quest log will be called uh, to check the location. We can optimize this later by making it only call the ones that aren't complete. Uh, but for now, we'll leave this as is to keep it simple. So that's the location marker done. And what I'm going to do now is close this and put the location marker actually in the world. So let's drag him out. And here I can click on the sphere here and scale the sphere up to cover an area. And I can name this one too. If I open up the location marker and make the location name here uh, instance editable and compiled it, I can now type in, I have to click off of it and click back on, I can name that location. So I'm going to call it the Elven Ruins. Which could be quite handy for um, like user interface elements you want to show, like say you're now entering the Elven Ruins. So when I collide with this, this is going to call that event dispatcher. And so now all that's left is to trigger the function for checking the location itself. For now we've got the print string, so let's test if that works with the print string. Accept it. Make it active. Walk into it. And there you go. So now I only want it to do code if it is the correct target. Now for all your objectives, if I click on the quest here, I've got... A, it's a location based objective, reach the other ruins, and then I've got a target here, it says none. The target itself will actually be this location marker. So click on the little eyedropper tool and click on the location marker. And there you go. So that objective is now tied to that location marker there. So when I run into this, it's going to compare itself with this variable here on the quest. So let's compare it. So location reached here is the location being sent from the actual location marker. I need to go through each of my objectives to test for whether or not it has reached that location and matches it. So let's go and drag our objectives array out. And then from there, we go for each loop. On the for each loop, 
each one of these elements is going to be broken up and then checked for their is complete and their targets so the first thing we'll do is the is complete so once I've broken it is complete going to come out here and I want this to be not a boolean so basically not true and the target here I'm going to check whether or not it is equal to this target reached input here and you just type in target uh, not target reach location reach there we go like so so I want to make these both true before I carry on so this can be an and like so and that's going to go into a branch so this branch will only continue on the true path if both it is not complete and the target for the objective matches the target location that's been reached if that's the case we're going to carry on with the branch and the objective uh, what I'm going to also do is I'm going to store the objective number here so the array index it will be the objective number so in the list what number is it in the list so array index here I come out here and choose promote through local variable because we don't need it accessible to everywhere else just need it accessible to this uh, function only so here I'm going to name this one objective number okay so from there I'll go down the true path so that means that the objective is matching the same one and it is true so the next job is to actually just tell it to be complete rather than uh, incomplete. So what I'm going to do is drag the objectives array out, choose get. And then from there, I'm going to set array element. The index for this is going to be the objective number. However, the item here, I'm going to come out and make. So the make, we want all this to be exactly the same as the current objective, but we want to change the is complete to true. So to get the exact same details out of it again, we're going to go and objectives array out again. Choose get a copy. Put the objective number into the index. And then split this structure like so. And simply just drag them out all across apart from the is complete because that's the one we're changing and I believe that will be it so this will now change that objective the last thing we need to do is change the user interface so the objectives in the top right hand corner change accordingly so for that to work we need to call our UI so the UI is handled by the game mode so what I'm going to do here is handle it on the completed section of the for each loop so on the for each loop um, I'm going to actually let's uh, make a, a boolean here so after set array let's make a local boolean here so local variables local variable uh, we'll say update UI and we'll set that to true afterwards so only we only want it to update the UI if it's have something has changed so on complete we're going to come down here and do a branch and the condition would be update UI and now we're going to access our UI and update the objectives UI so the objectives UI belongs to our HUD and our HUD belongs to our game mode so get game mode cast to third person game mode and then from there we can get the HUD uh, canvas because the canvas holds all the stuff and from there we can get objectives uh, no what's it called objectives oh no it's not is it HUD canvas not HUD canvas I don't think get HUD which it let's have a look get uh, objectives yeah there you go get objectives UI so get objective UI and the objective UI we're then going to call a function that we have on there uh, here. 
spare func function called update objectives. I'm going to call this function here. So update objectives. And that plugs into the cast. And the last little thing here is on the update objectives, there's one little thing we need to tweak. And that is because at the moment, if we update the objectives, it will just stack them all because it doesn't remove anything, it just adds more. So it only creates, it doesn't actually destroy anything. So what I'm going to do is on the update objectives, is I'm going to empty the list. So drag the list out, choose get, and from there, I'm going to go clear children. Now I'll empty the list of objectives in the top right hand corner. Okay, let's click play. Let's go pick up the objective. Accept. Might as well display it on the screen. I know it's incomplete. Walk into it, and there you go. It becomes complete. And that's it. So this episode we covered uh, quite a lot of stuff. We covered um, not just the setup of how to register objectives being completed, but also set up the location objective itself too. In the next episode, we're going to do the next one, which would be picking up items or interacting with one. Uh, and then after that, we'll go on to how to kill enemies and register their kills onto objectives. It's mostly what you see the same, so you're more than welcome to have a crack at it yourself. Um, but nonetheless, if you want to watch the video right now, you can over on Patreon. Thank you for everyone that's supported me so far. Uh, big, big thank you to everyone. So if you're interested to see the latest episode, head over to Patreon right now and donate just a dollar and you can support me as well as access all our videos um, and access our Discord. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.